how's how's it going with you? Did did you get that promotion? No, but we're on the cusp of something really big. You know Oscorp would hire you in a heartbeat, right? One phone call to hair. Sure, but Dr. Octavius's work will help millions. I'm, I'm, I'm right where I want to be, right where I should be. Almost oh, sounds like it's more important than your other job. I've never heard you talk like that before. A lot can change in six months. One of the biggest attributes that Marvel continuously places within the forefront of each and every one of their narratives is completely prioritizing their human element out of all of their superhuman alter egos. And while we have seen several Marvel stories stay true to this mantra time and time again, especially within the comics and the MCU respectively, I on the other hand personally believe, especially given the extremely exciting times that we're currently living in, that there is no greater form of storytelling to be found than within the realm of video games. And thanks to the multi of iconic characters and compelling stories that Marvel has locked within their wheelhouse, it should be no surprise to anyone that some of their video games have been able to offer just as impactful, if not even more compelling, experiences. And that is precisely what we're going to be talking about today. But anyways, welcome back true believers and all you merry Marvelites to another very intriguing Marvel games related video, where today I am going to be discussing more in depth about three particular Marvel games which not only do I thoroughly cherish, but also have incredibly compelling story arcs that thoroughly showcase exactly what makes each of these characters so special. Not only are all these titles obviously incredibly fun to play as far as a game goes, but some of the biggest reasons as to why these games are so beloved by so many people is because of the narratives that are included within them. And even though there have been other Marvel gaming experiences in the past that do feature their own unique narrative, or are either based off of a movie that does expand the narrative that was featured in that film, I I do genuinely believe that these three specific experiences do offer the absolute best of the best as to what Marvel can provide within the realm of storytelling that is found in gaming. And mainly in the case for the runner-up here, he has been viewed more as a side character in recent years, either relating to his involvement in the MCU or even in other Marvel games. However, there was a time all the way back in 2005 which truly displayed this rageful individual being thrown into one of his greatest battles yet. And that, as it turns out, directly relates to the struggle found within himself. Activating target broadcast for a high level threat. High level threat. Angry man on the move. Radical Entertainment set the benchmark for what it takes to create the definitive interactive Hulk experience. Now this not only related to Radical completely developing around the primary premise as to what makes any type of standalone Hulk game that much fun, Hulk! Smash! but they also went on to flesh out the experience even further by crafting an incredibly well-rounded story about the duality between Bruce Banner and the Hulk himself. Now, even though you might be restricted to only play as the Incredible Hulk within Ultimate Destruction, instead of taking things a bit slower in certain parts of the game's story to play as Bruce Banner outside of being the Jolly Green Giant, the main thing you want to do as the player is obviously cause as much chaos as possible while being a character as strong as the Hulk. And to turn that insanely destructive open world premise up to 11, Radical then moved on to create one of my favorite video game franchises with Prototype, which besides being able to play as him in Ultimate Spider-Man, is pretty much the most definitive Venom game we could ever hope to receive. But moving back to Ultimate Destruction is while the gameplay is the core element of this game that is praised the most, a lot of people do seem to overlook exactly what Radical set out to do when crafting this narrative. In layman's terms for those unaware, it is pretty direct that Bruce Banner is still trying to find a cure for his gamma-radiated disease. And although you do end up facing off against a plethora of iconic Hulk-related foes, like that of Mercy, General Thunderbolt Ross and his army of Hulkbusters, and even the character who might be deemed as the main antagonist with the Abomination, who in my opinion was played phenomenally by the one and only Ron Perlman, there is instead one major threat that trumps all of them. What's happening to me? My darling boy, my Bruce, don't be 
afraid. Scientists aren't supposed to fear. Evolution. <laughs> the Devil Hulk's interpretation within Ultimate Destruction is pretty much everything that Bruce tries to fight against. Even though Bruce might view the Hulkish side of himself as a massive danger that he wants to expunge in order to protect everyone else around him, the regular Hulk that we play as throughout the entirety of the game is nothing compared to his devilish counterpart. Throughout the entirety of the campaign, Devil Hulk continues to be a huge looming presence that is lurking in the recesses of Bruce's psyche. And while you do end up emerging victorious against him in a pretty damn epic boss fight, the overall amount of disdain and the refusal that Bruce has to truly accept exactly who he is as both himself and the Hulk is still residing within him well by the time the game ends. Because even though Bruce ends up defeating Abomination by the very final act of the game's narrative, Bruce still ends up losing the opportunity to find a cure for the Hulk. Instead of being able to depart from the Hulk completely, Bruce then has no other choice but to fully embrace everything that he has become. Whenever I personally think of the Hulk in terms of how to handle a proper narrative regarding the character, is I always love to see how Bruce is trying to handle the inner struggles that are continuously evolving within him as both the scientist who wants to help people, but also as this rage-fueled monster. And once again, seeing how Radical decided to portray that dichotomy between the two, it really solidified, in my opinion, that Bruce Banner and the Hulk are two sides of the same coin. And figuring out exactly which side of the coin the story ends up landing on is always going to make for some extremely compelling narrative possibilities. I guess this is me, Len. I'm not a person anymore, I'm the Hulk. And I can't force people to understand. You don't have anywhere to go. Who does? There is a very clear reason as to why Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy ended up winning Best Narrative at the 2021 Game Awards. And, in fact, a lot of the core themes that were heavily featured within Guardians Story, which were expertly crafted by all the writers at Eidos Montreal, do share a lot in common with my personal pick of Game of the Year for 2020, with none other than Persona 5 Royal. Now, even though Magus might be deemed as the main villain that the Guardians face off against by the end of the story, they do have have quite a lot of confrontations that they have to overcome against each other, but also within themselves. This is caused directly by the Soul Stone and its main wielder of the Matriarch, who, as we discover, ends up being Nikki, who at that point is Peter Quill's quote-unquote illegitimate daughter being fully manipulated by Magus. One of the biggest and most impactful philosophical questions that both Guardians and Persona 5 Royal directly bring up, mainly in thanks to the insanely well-written characters of the Matriarch and Dr. Maruki, is what would it be like to live in a world without pain? Where's your mom? Mom is here. She's right here. Inside me. Oh, thanks for clearing that up. The light joined us. I thought she was gone. But I can bring her back. They're all waiting for us to bring them back. All we need is faith. My work will convert the wishes of the people into reality. Even as we speak, my research is coming to fruition. No one will ever have to suffer again under the yoke of an unfair world. Just as she was saved by becoming Kasumi, I'll save every other person in the world currently suffering. In fact, it's my responsibility to do so. You can see how this world's bestowed the duty upon me. If you want to hear all my in-depth thoughts about Persona 5 Royal and how I personally believe its third semester arc is an utter masterpiece, I will be sure to leave a link to that video at the end of this one and in the description below. But for the case of Guardians, things are a little bit more straightforward, mainly due to the fact that Magus is obviously a completely evil entity. So it does make sense to immediately refuse the promise that each of the Guardians experienced during the middle point of the game's campaign. But for Nikki herself, things are a lot more complicated since her surrogate mother and Peter's past lover of Cor-El dies 
due to Magus' attack. And let me tell you that trying to convince Nikki to let go of her promise in order to save the rest of your teammates and the fate of the entire galaxy was without a doubt one of the most heart-wrenching moments I ever witnessed within a superhero video game. At this point of the story, Star-Lord really has to take a step up in order to try and become the leader of the Guardians that he was destined to be, but also try and be a proper father figure for someone like Nikki. You also have to keep in mind the entirety of Peter's backstory with losing his mom on Earth, but also having a father that pretty much abandoned him. So having to fill those pretty important shoes as someone who is pretty much a kid at heart is a lot to ask for someone who is still trying to be a hero. I remember feeling this cavernous- I don't care how you felt! Wow, um, that was brutally honest. I've seen your promise. I've seen hundreds of thousands of promises. None of them helped me. I know. I know. I just want you to know that I've been through some version of what you're going through. Yay! I need her back. I don't care if it's not real. I need things to go back to how they were, even if it means making the same stupid game for all stupid eternity. Just the thought that she might come back is better than admitting that she never will. And that... And then it's all my fault. It's true that I turned my back on the original reality. But where's the harm in that? When it grows to be too much, too painful, every person deserves to escape that. <sighs> In all honesty, it's best for a person's growth when they tackle their own hardships. But reality doesn't always make that so feasible. No matter how much you try, or work for so long, the smallest injustice can wipe it all out, leave you with nothing. Don't you of all people understand that? Trauma and grief is a pretty important element that is shared almost unanimously amongst the Guardians team. So being able to rise above those hardships as a tight-knit unit, all while saving the galaxy at the same time, truly made for one of the best interactive narratives that you could ever experience within the superhero genre. Which, for me, easily makes it an experience worth revisiting. Hey. Whatever happens. You're not alone. Okay? I'm sorry I'm late. Oh. You started without me. The Grant Committee's director will be here soon. It's fine, Parker. I invented this equipment. I think I can handle it. What could I possibly say about this absolute masterpiece of a game that hasn't already been said? Spider-Man is, without a doubt, one of, if not the most iconic characters to ever be created within the superhero medium. His legacy obviously spans across decades worth of incredible comics, a multitude of fan-favorite films which each have their own unique interpretation of the wall crawler in live action, and, most importantly, an abundance of awesome games. And while I do want to give an honorable mention to Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is an incredible Spider-Man game in its own right, I simply think the story that was told within the first game, especially considering that that narrative is longer than the standalone spin-off tale that was told in Miles' adventure, just has a lot more depth and nuance by completely reinterpreting classic Marvel characters that we know from the comics and modernizing them from the ground up to give us a portrayal of Peter Parker and Spider-Man that we've never seen before. There was seemingly an infinite amount of immensely heartfelt and character-driven story moments speckled throughout the entirety of the game's main campaign, as well as all three DLC chapters, especially when revolving around characters like Mary Jane, Felicia Hardy, Aunt May, Miles Morales, and Martin Lee, but the narrative element that stands out the most is without a doubt the mentor-mentee relationship between Peter Parker and Otto Octavius. As both Brian Intihar and Bill Roseman have gone on record several times throughout the development process of Spider-Man PS4, is that the best stories relating to the character are when the worlds of Peter Parker and Spider-Man collide. And furthermore, the ideal story relating to the character is that every time Peter Parker wins, Spider-Man loses. But when Spider-Man wins, 
Peter loses. And this game from top to bottom is a clear-cut display as to what exactly it means to balance the duality between Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Now, while there have been movies which do fully dive into this subject matter like Spider-Man 2 and even Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man PS4 takes things a step further by actually putting you as the player in the shoes of Peter Parker, which is a completely different experience than web-swinging around the city as Spider-Man. This is something that only a video game is capable of doing, where not only do you get to feel like you are that character, but it allows you to become more attached to everything that the character is experiencing. The relationship that you continue to build with Otto Octavius throughout the main campaign only becomes even more emotional the more you keep playing. The entire reason as to why Otto becomes Doc Ock in the first place is because you as the player allowed it to happen. Every moment that you spent working in Otto's lab was ultimately to end up creating the Dr. Octopus tentacles. This wonderful invention that Peter and Otto originally envisioned for the mechanical arms was only trying to make the world a better place and help those in need. But by the time you reach the final conclusion with Otto, both you as the player and Peter are left utterly heartbroken. And in my opinion, easily makes for one of the most emotionally impactful and compelling Spider-Man stories ever created. You are everything I wanted to be. You just threw it away. You rest easy, knowing your secret is safe with me. You do what you think is best, Doc. It's all any of us can. Peter? Even when it hurts like hell. Peter, where are you going? Peter? In the end, everybody, Marvel as a company is filled to the brim with narrative potential for each and every one of their characters. And seeing how well certain Marvel characters like the Hulk, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Spider-Man have translated into the realm of video games, it certainly makes me want to see even more engaging stories to be told within this ever-evolving medium of entertainment. And simply knowing the fact that we still have even more jaw-dropping Marvel gaming narrative experiences to dive into within the near future, I for one couldn't be happier. But with all that said, everybody, that's the video that I have for you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. Which particular Marvel title do you believe has the best story to be featured within the realm of video games, and what type of narrative-driven experiences from Marvel would you like to see next? Let me know all your thoughts, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy, and for more Marvel games videos like this in the future, and without further ado, peace out.